Hey, hi everybody, this is Laura. I'm here again with my friend Fabiana, <laughs> Fabiana Silvia. Hi Fabiana, thank you to, to be here with me again for another interview. Uh, I have many questions for you. Not many, but important questions regarding scar tissues, adhesion, of course we will talk about LDOA, etc. So two words regarding you uh, for um, someone that maybe, maybe don't know you, okay? Uh, so Fabiana Silva, Fabiana, I have here my nose. I'm full of notes here. <laughs> <laughs> so Fabiana Silva, is a, you are a researcher in the field of the fascia. You are a physiotherapist. You are a member of the Fascia Research Society Board. You are a member of, the, this is a news, I know this one. You are a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Body Work and Movement Therapy. Okay, yeah. comments about this. Uh, you are a, an organizer and a presenter of the International Fascia Research um, Congress, right? And you'll be a presenter next month. You'll be a presenter at the World Physiotherapy Congress in Dubai, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. And you are an Eldor friend. Because yes. uh, I, I noted that uh, when I interview you for the first time, then you gain your followers in the Eldor world. So I'm super happy that they follow you. Okay, so I'd like to do this uh, interview like this, in a sort of intro, okay? And then I will start with the first uh, case study. So my intro is the example of the guy wearing the um, the bodysuit uh, representing the fascia, everybody knows this one and, uh, and everybody un understand it. So if we pull the fascia in, uh, in uh, this way, so somewhere, uh, the fascia, this will provoke a limitation maybe in another way, in another place, right? It may be far from that point, uh, exactly. Uh, and this happened with scar tissue too, which is the topic of this uh, interview right uh, and my this is my first uh, so this was my intro and this uh, is my first uh, question my first uh, case study so th this is the story of this kid uh, he was a client of mine for like 10 years when i met him he was around eight uh, eight years old and uh, when he was a newborn okay a newborn he got a um, surgery on his heart so can you imagine how big, how long is, uh, how big is uh, his scar tissue? All the, all the chest, they open all the chest. And I remember when I worked with him, uh, I perfectly remember the, the feeling that something was pulling him in another direction. And there were a, a limitation in the movement, especially of the arms, of course. Um, it was clear to me, uh, it was clear to me uh, working with him. So this, this kid was uh, lucky because uh, he was sent to me uh, from uh, an uh, osteopath, a pediatric osteopath that treated him in time. And during that 10 years, he worked with me. I'm not a manual therapist, but we work a lot. So he was lucky. So my first question is uh, um, regarding the, uh, regards the definition of scar tissue and adhesion. And uh, if you can comment this story, I mean, this kid was lucky. Uh, it happened, the treatment of, of this scar tissue, it happened on time, in my opinion. Uh, so what is the definition uh, of uh, scar tissue and adhesion in this, uh, in, in the fascial, of course, perspective? Okay, thank you, Laura, for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be connected with the Eldoa world. Um, let's think about it. Uh, our body is really smart. And the process of uh, scar tissue uh, remod remodelation and the process is natural, right? Mm -hmm. So you need, uh, you have the steps, you have the time during these steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the body will be okay with the scar tissue. You don't need to do nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. For me, this is the first point. Otherwise, sometimes you do too much and it's not necessary. And, and so the first thing is that once you have an scar tissue, we will have this for all of your life because 
a scar tissue doesn't uh, go back to the, the previous tissue that you have. Okay? We never disappear, we never really... No, you will have. The question is that uh, your body needs to adapt to this new type of tissue. Not just in a mechanical point of view, but in a neural point of view, that for me is sometimes more important, right? Mm -hmm. When you have a uh, problems with a sensation or pain or itches, Okay, but uh, in a mechanical point of view, when we have a scar, and it's good to remember that we will have a scar just at least after 40 days. Mm. So, if you have a, 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 a injury here, and uh, it's just a, one week, you don't have a scar yet yeah. why because you need to pass through all the steps of the uh, repair process to have a scar and so if it's a scar with this size and a little bit uh, um deep in one in two weeks you don't have a scar yet for me this is an important point because sometimes People are anxious. So I, I need to do something with this car. And we start to do things uh, in earlier uh, time. And this is not good for the tissue. The, t oh. the tissue needs to go through the process. Because in the first steps you need to, to have, you have the hemorrhage time, the, the blood goes out and so on. The second step, you have inflammation. Inflammation is necessary. Otherwise, you don't have you, this. The, the process never will stop, right? The second, the third step is the proliferation step. In, and we will, of course, of course, depends the size and the deepest, the deep of the, the injury. The third step we will course just um, in the third week after a a surgery at the thorax. Probably we will start in some points and other points uh, in the third or in the fourth week. So like a month after the injury, and in this phase you need to take care. Otherwise we will have too much proliferation and to translate to fascia you you will have too much fibroblasts there and if you have too much fibroblast there the body will need to do a remodelation or more remodelation in the fourth step and it will take more time for this scar tissue be uh more more near to the the other tissues of the body to end the process okay mm -hmm. so um for me sometimes we are anxious in uh do the better end of the for the story but we need to think in nature and natural process and you need to uh, have in your mind that with a child like the case that you mentioned it, mm -hmm. the process can be faster than with a no, no. Other, other person, right? Or one uh, other oldest person mm -hmm. with a lot of issues, a lot of health problems, like a hypertension, like a low inflammation, uh, silence uh, in low inflammation at the body with uh, stress with a um, sleep issues do you know mm. and so with this this kid uh, probably because in osteopathic field the touch is really light it's it's uh, it's the the better touch the better way to work in a scar tissue with manual therapy 
um, probably uh, he had a good treatment and after which your stimulus mechanical stimulus by the movement the process goes uh, ends in a proper way right mm -hmm. but i think that uh, we need to keep in mind that the the beginning of the process is really important because influences in the end product okay mm -hmm. it's interesting this this thing that uh because we, we we are obsessed obsessed regarding treatment 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 the mm -hmm. the, yes the adhesion and etc and what you said before it's interesting that sometimes you don't have to do nothing sometimes the, the body works uh, uh, autonomously in my, I mean do everything do everything perfect because the body is perfect okay. My second uh, case study regards a colleague of mine. I met her mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles and she showed me her deep, uh, I mean deep in, uh, in the abdomen, this mm -hmm. deep and old uh, scar tissue. This happened something like 20, maybe 25 years ago. Um, and she never treat the, the scar tissue. Nobody treat the scar tissue. It's, I, I, I can tell you it's not nice because uh, go inside. Um, so the question is in general, I mean, um, can you explain what kind of uh, uh, postural imbalances can provoke a scar tissue or maybe uh, adhesions, I think so, if you don't treat it? Okay, she have an issue, she have pain, she have a, um, she has a, a sort of torsion in the in the posture of her uh, pelvis, and we know that the pelvis okay. is fundamental in the posture of the body. So at the end of the story, yes, she she don't have. I don't think she has pain, not pain, mm -hmm. but, but she's not in balance. Okay, the first thing that I that I, if she is my patient, the the first thing that I will do is to check if it, this is an active scar tissue at least with two uh, 20 years and how i can uh, evaluate this i would uh, feel and uh, put this scar tissue in movement and if is uh, at least with a problem with uh, movement in one direction we consider an active scar tissue okay right. because it can't glide in a in one way okay this is one mechanical point of view and we can check um if she have a like a neck pain or if she have a shoulder pain and if she, if we touch we change the biotensegrity in the scar tissue region if this improve her movement at the neck improve her movement her movement or or uh, pain in shoulder or so on in a, in other places of the body that she have issues right or complaints and uh with 20 years this is not a matter because we can treat we can give to her a good uh, mechanical stimulus and neural stimulus to improve the quality of the glide of this tissue and you can do this by manual therapy or you can do this by uh, respiration modes mm. and by uh, eldoa and by movement thinking that you will facilitate the glide of this tissue Okay. Let me send it to uh, show you one example. If she had a, a problem to go down, but it's easy to go up, okay. you can go up and it stops when the tissue uh, in a barrier and you can move her and put her in a position of facilitation. It's the position that uh, where when the tissue goes better it slides better or glides better and works with a deep uh, 
respiration. Okay, and mm. uh, asking her, put your air here, put your hand here at the scar tissue, feels the tension, try to improve the volume in this region. And thinking on this, because it's 20 years, her brain is working with her body in this area. And sometimes when we have a um, chronic problem, uh, it's, it seems like we have a fog area mm -hmm. in our brain. And uh, it's good to think of this, using the cognitive uh, process to think, to think in volume, in 3D dimensions of this region and um, throw the air to the air and put her hands here to improve the the volume to it's like a yay say to your body that this part is part of your body right you need to recognize this part again and um and we can work with different gestures to with vibration uh in low frequencies mm -hmm. uh, like uh, less than 50 hertz Okay. Because the brain and the, the fascia tissue likes vibration because our uh, organs, uh, they have their uh, vibration frequency, right? Yes. And, so, uh, and it's never um, uh, later to work in a scar tissue because the connective tissue, once we uh stimulate the connective tissue response so can be 30 years can be 15 can be you can do it hmm. very often these people with big scar tissue don't have the sensitivity of the area right but you are yeah. telling me that we have to stimulate that that's yeah and yeah. we can come back we can create a new awareness of the body get back to the awareness of the body mm -hmm. and we we have the opposite we have people that have hyperalgesia okay. and so the light touch oh my god it's mm -hmm. it's so difficult and you can work in a distance zone mm -hmm. to, to improve the situation here okay. and you can use the vibration to with the hand like um, uh, look at uh, the scar is here and you can touch but you can work here in a distance way so you work distally yeah distally or in a distance mm -hmm. thinking on biotensegrity and the body suit suit of fascia yes. and you can improve there super interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> I have another uh, case study, which is the last one. Um, this is a, another colleague of mine. She sent me a message that I sent you. Uh, yeah. So she got surgery um, six weeks ago, okay, in her pelvis. Uh, this was uh, her second surgery. She had another a first uh, surgery many years ago, and now uh, she had the complication and she had to go to surgery again. Uh, mm -hmm. So they fix everything, they clean everything, the tissue and etc. But she is still in super pain and she would like to uh, come back to her life. To She, she does my whole, my job so she wants to work out and etc. And to teach again to people and, and be active and etc. So the question is about the timing, the timing to get back to a normal life and it's about uh, pain. Because you said in, at the beginning of this interview, you said you said that pain is a factor, in, is an important factor, right? Mm -hmm. So timing to get back to a normal life and the factor of pain. Yeah. Uh, in this case, we have two different things. Uh, the first thing is the memory of the trauma, hmm. because uh, surgery is one trauma. Yes right not just mechanical trauma but uh, oh i'm i'm afraid of the result i'm afraid i can die uh, or sometimes when people have a, a car crash or an accident when you touch the scar tissue they remember 
all the process. And so it's an emotional process too, mm. not a mechanical process. This is the first point with this patient, and right? From what I know from about this um, friend, this colleague, I know that this happened very fast uh, and it was very, uh, I mean, uh, traumatic. Yes, in one of the definition of trauma by Dr. Peter Levine is that it's something, Laura, that happened with you that can be really fast, can be really deep, can be uh, uh, difficult for you to to like a process this thing and can be some some things for me and other things for you but it's something that happened sometimes really fast and we can't react in a proper way and maybe it can be this this case right can be um and uh, and now she have a second process and like the memories of the previous process come back with in a strong way again and um one th the first thing that I will ask her is what about your sleep to recover you need to sleep my dear otherwise it will be difficult how about the food that you are intaking that you are eating because if you are with a acidic pH mm -hmm. and you are eating something uh, eating foods that are inflammatory foods your fascia your scar tissue ph the matrix will be a messy and your scar tissue will have problems and so it's not just the the mechanical it's in in a one health uh thinking way of think and sleep uh ph and food intake water intake and control the stress if she's my patient i will start with this like uh, respiration modes uh meditation uh to control the stress level otherwise we will have too much fibroblasts in this this car area and we will have a densification and a fibrosis. It's, it, the literature shows to us you can be the best manual therapist or the best Eldoa practitioner if your client is in a stress mode with the high levels of cortisol, for example, mm -hmm. it will be a mess. Yeah, and so I will talk with her about this do the uh, work with cold heat light cold light light heat not light cold but cold heat the vibration different textures working in the sensorial mode at the scar tissue respiration too uh not too much a stretch the scar tissue don't need these these this no because otherwise the information that you give for the body is that oh another trauma there we need to fix let's put the fibroblasts more more and more in the area and she don't need this she uh she actually have a scar tissue she needs to rem the remodelation now okay and thinking in to come back to uh, the previous uh, activities, the, the previous level of workout and so on, she needs to, to first pass these steps that I'm saying. And uh, probably she can go back uh, six months after. But we need to check the health quality in a in a more systemic point of view, not just the tissue. Uh, and after this, she can come back to, to her activities. And uh, one th 
thing that I think that is important for now is to do some exercises, maybe from Eldoa, uh, of mobilization of the spine. Why? Because in the thoracic spine, we have the sympathetic uh, nervous going and we can regulate the stress working on this. And at the sacral region, we have the parasympathetic chains that can help to control the stress too and put her in a, in a better way because the parasympathetic system is the anti-inflammatory system, right? That controls the level of inflammation. We need inflammation, but we don't need uh, for uh, no. eternity, right? And not and not in uh, too much, too much that cause symptoms. This is important, or a lot of symptoms, symptoms that we can't manage, right? And uh, another point of view is that when you have pain, I have a scar here, and I have pain. The information from this area goes to where? the spinal cord, yes. spine. And so when you do mobilization of the spine, you uh, like a, do a regulation in the, the facilitation of this information. It's like, a, it's too much information from here is going to the dorsal horn and it's going up to maybe to, to a spinothalamic tract, tract or in the, the pathway that goes to the emotional area of the brain. And when you do a spine mobilization, you try to silence, put the silence in this information. It's like, it's too much, too much, too much. Hey guy, keep silence. We don't need this information right now, it's too much. And uh, we maybe kind of cut this information working in the spine's level. So for her, I think that can be a good way, right? To work. Of course, I don't know her. Uh, if she is my patient, I will talk a lot with her, uh, try to understand the contest and try to help her in a, in a better way. Okay, Laura. And if she wanna talk with me, please feel free to give to her my contact. For sure, she is. Uh, at some point, I will post this interview in a few minutes okay. when, we, when we land. And for sure, she will uh, uh, watch your. Um, you are super generous as usual. So, and you said things uh, super interesting because uh, in the beginning we chat with these uh, colleagues of mine, and in the beginning we were talking about thinking about, of course, the Eldoa of the pelvis because uh, the surgery was in that area. Uh, but I. I Mm, I'm honest, I wasn't, uh, I didn't think about the Eldoa, uh, about the T-spine and what you said <laughs> makes sense, of, of course, and you know that we are super specific, so we have an Eldoa for each segment of the spine, so we can be super specific, absolutely, perfect, perfect. absolutely, I'm thinking too specific Eldoa for T89, yes, I'm thinking to this kind of, of, of Eldoa, and then probably in a second moment she will, uh, um, practice the Eldoa for the sacrum. We have the Eldoa for the, for the sacrum for each level. Okay, great, great advice as usual. <laughs> and you anticipate in some way my uh, last uh, question, and it's nice because we didn't prepare this interview. Yeah, no. It's, it's nice. Um, my, uh, of course, I have a, a question regarding Eldoa. You anticipate it. Uh, I mean, scar tissue and adhesion must be treated, uh, must be addressed. Uh, manually, but the Eldoa works with the fascia, and the goal is to maintain, to get or to get back, I don't know, uh, the integrity of the tissue, uh, improve the quality, uh, the quality of the tissue. So we stimulate uh, the tissue in a, in a series of process like uh, increasing the blood flow, reducing the tension, etc., the inflammation, the pain, and etc. 
So my question was, what do you think about, but you, you already answered, what do you think about techniques like the Eldora as complement of manual um, therapy to help to restore the tissue? Yeah, and sometimes, Laura, as uh, I was thinking, you, you don't necessarily need the manual therapy. This is, this is incredible what you are telling me. I, I thought no. the opposite. I thought the opposite. Great. No, you need a mechanical stimulus in a proper way for the time of the process and uh, for the repair, for the remodeling of the tissue. And a mechanical stimulus can be external or internal, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Can be made by hand, can be made by a, a soft ball, can be made by internal, the, the contraction, the flow, the fluid flow that we need to have a healthy shoe by the respiration, right? And we don't have uh, enough research on this, uh treating these cars uh without manual therapy uh but we have research uh like the made by professor ellen langeman mm -hmm. that uh, are with stretch by 10 minutes it's a long time and yes. it's not because it's a stretch it's because it's a me again a mechanical stimulus in a proper way, in a proper time, with a good uh, amount of uh, tension, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it's, it's possible to work without manual therapy. And remember, uh, the body and the nature can do the work alone yeah it's not mandatory that okay you have a scar tissue you need treatment no we have a lot of people that have scar issues and they, they don't have problems because it's not one uh thing on this equation it's the, the process is a little bit more complex <laughs> Okay, Fabiana, we finished. Thank okay, you. Okay, Laura. As usually, thank you. Super available, super nice. Um, I have another question, to be honest. Okay. It's not really a question. I just would like to uh, to tell to, to me, I know, but to the other uh, watching this interview, what is going to happen uh, in Rio? Of course, you are in Rio in this moment. And why mm -hmm. you are you in this moment? <laughs> what is going to happen? You know, I'm yeah. curious. <laughs> Uh, it will be a pleasure having you guys here in Rio because in next week, next year, in the beginning, probably we will define this, but probably uh, in the end of April and the beginning of May next year, 2024, we will have a cl clinical summit for, from Fascia Research Society. And the, the main uh proposed of this uh, event is to put together and do the link between research and the clinical fields and uh we will uh, look at the uh, woman health mm. and, uh, scar tissues pelvic floor etc 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 hormones and so on and um you can do an application for do a presentation at this event for free. You don't need to pay to present. Uh, and uh, I will let you know when it's open. And you can come here to be attendees, of course. Uh, and will be a three days event. And uh, it will be amazing in Rio. We, are, we will be together studying about fascia, do amazing things together. So 
I'm, I would like uh, that you have he you be here with us. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And this will be only live or in um, on Zoom too? Or no, this, this will be on the, only in only person. person. Okay. Uh, and this year in September, uh, we will have the World Congress of Fascia online that you are invited I know. To I'm going, I'll be there. Yeah. And you, uh, it's a um, congress uh, with dissection sessions. Mm -hmm. Guys, amazing. Made from the Guben Plastination in Germany. Mm -hmm. It's a dissection of fascia, fresh cadaver. Uh, a lot of uh, movement, practical sessions scar tissue sections, lectures, uh, presentation of research, and you have a hundred days to watch after the oh. event okay. with okay. translation to English, Portuguese and Spanish. So it's an amazing opportunity and the fee is quite low. So yeah, you, you need to, to be with us too. I know that some Eldor people uh, already sign up. Oh, cool. I know because I'm in touch with my friends around the world and I know that some of them already sign up. Okay, okay. Okay, Fabiana, thank you. Thank you for your time <laughs> and etc. Okay. Ah, it's and a pleasure. You, you will be my insider during these events. I hope you will send, you will send me like you did uh, uh, messages and video, short video about what happened in, uh, as an insider. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, yes. thank you, Fabiana. Ciao, have a good day. Ciao.